Well, you see all this on the ground? That's gas. So, somehow, up in there, there's fuel lines between the cab and the bed. I'm pretty sure a mouse or something has chewed them through. And that was me just trying to haul ass, trying to get this in the shop so I can work on it. It was spraying it everywhere, even up on the back glass. Fun times. Well, we're gonna start working on the old GMC for the trip coming up in a few months. Got some new fuel line for it. That's not gotten cheap anymore. Some good quality fuel injected rated hose. Good for ethanol and some good clamps. That was 60 bucks. That kind of hurt. But where the fuel line actually goes on this truck, I just soon put good quality line in it so I don't have to do this again anytime soon. So right now, we're gonna go ahead and put her up in the air so I can get all the bed bolts out because I'm gonna have to lift the bed up to uh, access where the fuel line's at because somebody's poor decision on uh, how to decide to build this thing. So you guys can see how much droop's really built into this truck. It's uh, pretty low for a truck on 40s compared to most vehicles. It's, if you wanna see how many inches it's lifted, it's roughly about five or six over stock. But uh, just watch the droop. It's pretty good. <laughs> in the air oh time to pull the bed All right I got the fuel line off the truck and it does not have a hole in it from a mouse but if you can see this if I squeeze it just right it's gotten old and started to split so that explains that and the way uh, we did this which I didn't take any video of it is I took the bed entirely loose and uh, put it underneath those corners right there of the bed and just lifted it up, tilted it up enough where I could get to the fuel lines. I actually bent the steel lines back down where they're not going to be between the cab and the bed anymore. I'm going to trim them down a little bit and run hose all the way to the steel line. So if I have this problem, I can change the line really easy and not have to worry about it. Because if that fuel line started doing that on a trip, it would have been a pain in the butt. And hopefully, I wouldn't have caught fire going down the road, not realizing that it was spraying everywhere. Well, I'm up in Kentucky uh, visiting. And uh, a friend of mine in West Virginia had this brought down so I can work on it for him. Uh, he needs to prep it for a trip we have coming up in March. But uh, he had a medical issue that's currently going on. So I told him I'd take care of it. And he'll just have to come down and come get it. So uh, we're going to haul this thing down to Florida and see if I can get it ready for the trip in March. And hopefully uh, he's good to go and uh, can come on the trip. Well, we made it back to Florida with the Blazer. I'm gonna try, I think, to uh, get the fire, the uh, pressure washer fired up, which might be interesting. The other thing was to fight me all the time. And uh, give it a quick little bathroom underneath so when I have to work on it, I don't get faces full of dirt and mud. It's not really that dirty, but since it's up on the trailer, it'd be a lot easier to clean because I can just stand here and use the pressure washer and not have to bend down. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Well, we got it off the trailer. So, uh, we'll see how this goes. Well, it's after I fix the battery cable that really needs to be fixed again, but 
I'll worry about that later. So I noticed this thing was kicking back harder than the starter, and it had a pop at idle. That usually indicates that the time is too far advanced. And on these TBI trucks, a lot of people don't know how to put the separate timing on them. So the connector, and this one is right here, a little one pin connector. After it's warmed up, you want to hook that connector, and then you set the timing. That's zero, but I always give it about five degrees advanced on top of that. These are a little bit better. But uh, I should take a video when the first thing was running. It was missing and popping and tearing it on. Now she's smooth as glass. Come back here and burn away everything looks good temperature looks good got good oil pressure good voltage so uh, we're doing pretty good A little one thing off the list we got a little progress on the GMC I did get a new fresh battery in here this is my uh, dual battery setup. I had an experience a few trips ago where the battery is probably going bad, but it killed my battery with the refrigerator running all night. So it's a pretty simple setup. It has a constant duty solenoid that's hooked to ignition power. So when you turn the key on, that, that solenoid energizes and hooks both batteries together so they can both be charged. It also lets me self jump start, which is what I was doing to move the truck around when the other battery was in here that was bad, the starting battery. I can actually uh, jump a screwdriver across these two terminals right here and hold it there for a minute, the key on, and it'll energize and stay energized enough for me to crank it and start it. I've considered putting a uh, toggle switch underneath the da or under the hood here somewhere so I can just flip a switch and I don't have to jump with the screwdriver, but I'm not too worried about it. Usually I have something handy I can just jump it with. Not the safest, but it works. Now we're going to uh, put this thing back up in the air. So I can complete hooking up the new fuel lines and get the bed bolted on. And while I'm under there, I'm going to change the fuel filter. So I don't have to worry about it siphoning since there's no fuel in it because the fuel lines were unhooked. Well, I got the fuel filter changed. It's not in a very convenient spot anymore because I have a skid plate and everything up in the way. But let's just say... Uh, it's pretty clogged. <coughs> I can't even blow through the damn thing. So it might be part of the reason why the fuel line started leaking. But that's changed. We have the uh, fuel lines ran right there now. So they give me problems. I can get to them really easy now and fish a new piece of hose in. Before, there's between the cab and the bed, you couldn't get to it. So now uh, I need to get some bolts in the bed and tie all the wires back up. All right, we got the fuel filter changed. New fuel lines on. I checked all the fluids underneath, except for the front axle, because I can't find my uh, wrench for that. I'll find it later. Greased everything. The only thing I really have left to do is actually change the oil, put my hubs on, and do a nut and bolt check. So and reorganize the truck. But uh, if I had to leave tomorrow, I could, and I wouldn't worry too much about it. Now we're gonna take a little test drive. All right, test drive time. Ever since I moved the exhaust out the side, it's a lot quieter in the cab. And I have a feeling, since that fuel filter was really clogged, I might have a little bit more power now.
Well, that's a lot better. He hit something on the front. The quartz port was bent, so I just took the winch up and uh, pulled it back out. So, it's a lot better than it was. Well, I've started to drive the truck to work, make sure everything's still good in it for the trip coming up. It's a good way to make sure there's no big issues because usually if there is, it's going to come from actual road driving 90% of the time. So that's where we are now with it. I still have a few things to do. And then I got to work on my buddy's blazer and get it ready. It's got a pretty big list of things to do. But uh, the next thing I'm probably working on is our garden tractors. So until the next video, that's uh, where we're at right now.